SGLT. A man, a discipler, and a prophet to the nations. Introduction. In 1937, an Englishman named Sidney Granville Elton left his home country of England armed with a mandate for the Christian Church of Nigeria. He was only 30 years old, was an elder at the Apostolic Church at Shrewsbury, a town in the strict county of Shropshire, which was famous for being the birthplace of Charles Darwin. He was sent as a missionary to Nigeria by the Apostolic Church headquarters at Penning Groves, Wales. His task was to do what missionaries were so known for, to establish and oversee schools and churches in the name of the Maternal International Mission, the Apostolic Church Mission. Beside this, he was to do no more and no less. This is Friends of Missions International and I am Brother David. If you are joining this channel for the first time, I want to believe we are going to have a swell time as we share with you great and mighty things the Lord has done in the life of our fathers of faith, faith of old. And uh, we want this channel to go viral. Please feel free to subscribe to this channel, share this video with someone, and of course, drop a comment if you feel moved and blessed with this video. Let's continue. Is Heli Life. Pastor Sidney Elton was born on April 16, 1907 to Ernst Elton and Edith Annie Baker, his wife. They got married on May 26, 1906. In 1916, Edith died of preliminary tuberculosis at age 34. Sidney Elton's father remarried, and in 1925, Ernest Elton also succumbed to the pulmonary tuberculosis after battling it for three years at age 43. He died. After his parents' death, Elton assumed responsibility for Marjorie and Mary's siblings. It was in the midst of this unfortunate incident, which had cast a shadow on his life, that he met Jesus Christ through Anna Cartwright, who later became his wife. She invited him to fellowship at her church, the Brethren Church. Just when life was beginning to take shape, he lost his elder sister, Marjorie, to pulmonary tuberculosis at the age of 25. September 7, 1934, a girl was born to the Elton family, and she was named Ruth. From the early days of Pa Elton, he had taken on a more aggressive approach to evangelism, going out on the street, sharing trad, talking to people about the seven grace of the Lord with placard strapped across his neck with the inscription, I am a fool for Christ on the front, and on the back, whose fool are you? A man and his call. Pa L. G. Elton a British clergyman who caught the passion to win souls in the interior continent of Africa. This was the time when the colonial rule owed its firm grip on Africa, and Africa is indeed in need of the apostolic zeal to fulfill our destiny. Elton either the call to be in Africa at a time when God has already kindled the fire of revival in Africa and Nigeria in particular, as the various missionary were pioneered by the Faith Tabernacle Movement, which had laborers like Uduba and Jobabalola and other fathers of faith have started entering into the interiors of Nigeria. The Aladra Movement, championed by Orimoladi, Shadari and the likes, has also given birth to Pentecostalism in Nigeria. By character, Elton was a man who liked to ascertain the credibility of an instruction before jumping into it. Prior to his leaving England, he underwent three stages of revelation from God over a period of six good years. First, in November 1932, he received prophecy concerning him being used by God in a ministry unto others. After God has laid hand on him in his own home, two years later, 
on 14th July 1934, God said he was sending both him and his wife to Nigeria. Then the third time in 1936, at a meeting of the Church Council of Apostles held at the headquarters in Penningrose, Wales, he was called to be a missionary where someone prophesied, send my servant Elton to Nigeria. What was spectacular about the meeting at Wales was that one hour later, a similar prophecy was delivered 3,000 miles away in another council meeting holding at Lagos, Nigeria, in which someone confirmed by the Spirit that one coming Elton would be an apostle among them. So Elton got this telegram from the headquarters will instructing him to telephone. After speaking with the president of the church over the phone, he faced counsel at the headquarters where he was instructed to get ready to travel to Nigeria for a brief stay of two years to test the water, so to speak, because the weather in Africa could be severe to his wife and three-year-old daughter, Ruth. Heading to the call, Elton boarded an elder dumpster ship bounded for West Africa and they left Liverpool on 17 February 1937 and also a brief stint of embankment in cities such as Freetown and Accra. He arrived in Lagos, Nigeria on March 11, 1937. To God alone be all the glory he must have written in his dictionary. In 1937, the year Elton stepped on the Nigerian soil, the Apostolic Church, TAC, has successfully established churches and schools. Thanks to the white missionary who came before Elton, it was a win-win ministry for both groups. Though, while Nigeria gains funds, teachers, and a degree of protection from government interference, the British church gained the status that comes with the operating an international evangelical project, the bond of fellowship. When Elton arrived, he and Joseph Ayodede Babla forged a bond. Their relationship consisted of instruction and guidance, as Elton at one time or the other survived and served as mentor for Babalola. Their relationship would continue that way for a long time, even though in 1939, when, after an internal crisis with the British missionaries, Babalola left TAC along with TAC's pastors Udubanjo and Akinyele, the trio went ahead to form another denomination named as Christ Apostolic Church, CAC. And when he was dismissed from his position by the Apostolic Mission Board in 1954 due to controversy had created by inviting Canadian leaders of the later rain movement to Nigeria, a polarizing movement which embraced the contested practice of impacting spiritual gift through the laying on of hands. Elton worked for CAC through the 50s and 60s, becoming a sort of renegade evangelist from thenceforth. But there was an Achilles heel in the Elton Babala relationship. In his book, Messenger, Ayodele Abodude attempted three instructions Elton gave to Babalola, but which Babalola denounced. Elton criticized Babalola persistent and repetitive use of bell, staff, and sanctified water. He explained that even though God showed Babalola these three things at the start of his ministry, as he claimed, they were merely spiritual symbols and not an instrument of miracles in themselves. The bell represented witnessing and evangelism. The staff was the authority given to him to perform and the sanctified water was a sign that his ministry would be characterized with miracles. Nonetheless, Babalola refused bluntly. He saw no reason why he should compromise what worked for him because a white man said it. Until today, many of his followers still use these objects, with many putting their trust in the efficacy of these things rather than in God. This was one of the presage that Elton preconceived and tried to correct. He never knew that many more were to come. Even though both men disagreed on this matter of objects of miracle, they agree on other things. Elton was a man who strongly believed in Christian literature. He believed that reading could enlighten and liberate a man. In 1940s, 
He distributed tracts. He translated Franklin Hall's book, especially Atomic Power with God, with fasting and prayer, into Yoruba so that Babalola could read them. This book influenced Babalola so much that when he published a slim book titled Great Power Through Prayer and Fasting sometime later, a book which contained a tract titled 90 Reasons Why We Should Fast, he almost copied Hall's book verbatim. Babala certainly had ideas of his own from the very beginning. The importance of fasting, the possibility of healing without medicine, and the power of prayer. Yet, when given the opportunity, he borrowed language and concepts from the American evangelist Franklin Hall in order to amplify, extend, and articulate his message. We shall continue from here in the next episode. So, Please ensure that you follow me to the end of this series. This is Friends of Missions International and our commitment is to bridge the gap between the church and missions by reawakening the body of Christ through Christian literature, missions, advocacy, leadership, development and capacity building. We want our message to go far and that is why we need you to drop to drop a word with us, to like this video and share with others and of course follow or subscribe for more edifying videos like this. Before I go, if you are here to give your life to Christ, today is another opportunity to do so and feel free to reach out to us via email from in 360 at gmail.com. We will help you out and get you properly discipled. Remember, Jesus loves you. This is Brother David from Friends of Missions International. Till I see you in the next episode, remain rapturable. Bye for now.